and all. Hope everybody's doing good. Happy Saturday, as always. Hope everyone's had a good week and stuff. Finals are over. Here we go. It's summertime. Although today the weather's not so good. It's been really nice the past couple days. But not anymore. So really quick, the plan will be to jam for just like a short, I don't know, five, ten minutes, and then we'll rant a little bit, talk about music today, because that's been a thing, as you could probably guess, and then uh, we'll jam a bunch more. So yeah.
That was really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So, all right, uh, let me grab a, nah, never mind. It's cool. We're just gonna do some quick thoughts here as I sip some tea. So, you know, I don't, I don't really prepare these rants, so uh, there might not be a clear <laughs> beginning or ending point to this. This is kind of slanted. Give me one hot sec. There we go. Yeah, so, um, I was planning on talking about today about uh, like music and creating music and what all that means. Um, so I, I think first and foremost, the most important thing to keep in mind is that music, really any art, is kind of a mindful practice and that it's, it's an expressive form, but it's not just like, blah, blah, <laughs> you know, you don't just like sit down and play guitar and go blah, 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 blah. I mean some days you do totally but the goal of it isn't to do that you know the goal is to express something meaningful um, and let out something meaningful so this is super important to think about because it makes you realize just how much discipline you need um, you know uh, I forget what the what the book was but or you know, wherever this quote is from, but people say that you need like 10,000 hours of discipline to actually master something, to master an art, for example, to master a job, for example. And in the end, everything is kind of art, so like, you know, jobs are art, math is art, it's all art. <laughs> but, but you know, so if it's music though, or, or meditation, or, you know, another thing that I do a lot, obviously, um, or work or science, whatever, it takes a long time with a lot of focus and a lot of discipline to actually get good at something and to actually reach a stage where when you do it, it's not just blah, blah, blah. When you do it, it's actually a meaningful expression of something that's, you know, within or whatever. Um, I guess the goal is to, to connect to something that's greater than yourself. Um, because one thing eventually that you realize in any spiritual or mindful practice is that you get in your own way until you don't, <laughs> basically. Like, creativity is there, but if you're trapped in your own head of ego and, like, wanting to be good or wanting to be good enough even, then you lose something because that's a distraction, you know? The discipline involves noticing these distractions and pushing them aside basically um, and so in, in meditation this means you know you're on the breath you're on the breath you're on the breath thought comes up you get distracted the discipline comes when you notice you become distracted and you move back to the breath in music it's a little harder to, to think about I, in a way but as a, as a player of music though the way I think about it is, I guess when I'm just present, I, I, yeah, I, I think that's kind of what this all boils down to. When you're present in the moment, in the moment, in the music, and it just flows, when you're not thinking about what you're playing, when you're just playing it, but listening very intensely to it as it comes out, that is the discipline, that is the goal of musical practice. And so all the other times you're thinking, oh, I'll do this, and it'll sound good, and you'll go, blah, 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 blah. and maybe sometimes it'll sound good, but it loses the creative aspect. Um, and, you know, sometimes I notice this in my own play, like, there's kind of habits, certain riffs that I always come down to, like, you know, I play that a million times a day, practically. It's like my favorite riff. It sounds so good. 
but um, but you know that sort of thing. Even if it sounds good, you, you, you gotta save it for when the moment calls on it. You know, you can't just have it be your go-to in like every situation because every situation is unique. And you know, the creative power that you're trying to connect to will respond to every situation uniquely in exactly the way that it wants to be created, but also in the way that you want to create it. You know, all of this stuff is channeled through you, which is the beautiful part of this, um, because it's your interpretation, your translation of this thing greater than yourself, essentially. <clears throat> So this is super important and like, what does it mean to be creative? Well, get rid of your ego, get rid of yourself, stop paying attention to being good and just do it for fun. But not even for fun, just do it for the emotional experience that it gives you, I guess. You know, music sometimes is happy, sad, funny, you know, music can be sexy, you know. It's just the way that it comes together and you just gotta go with it and you gotta follow it. And you gotta kind of be with it um, if you want to be creative and so one of the things that I wrote in the little description for this little thingy ba doop thingy ba doop eh, whatever uh, thingy ba jig is um, it's called the hose and so an interesting analogy for this uh, was put by uh, Carlos Santana and so Carlos Santana used to tour with fish in like the early 90s, back when Fish was really small, they would open and uh, and stuff for Santana. So they were really like, they got to be pretty pretty close friends and stuff. Trey was hugely influenced by Santana's play. Interestingly, Santana was hugely influenced by Trey's play. Um, and they would get out and jam together sometimes and it was really incredible. Um, you, can, you can find some of those recordings. But Santana put it that the music is like water, and you guys are the hose. You know, the water flows through the hose, and the way Santana said it, you know, you're basically watering the plants. The audience is the plants, you're watering the plants. Um, you're the hose, and the, and the water travels through you, and so the, the best thing you could do is just get completely out of the way and let the water just flow through in whatever way it wants to flow through. I mean, this is how you basically achieve that highest level of expression um, you just completely get out of the way in other words it's a selfless state um, because it's a state in which the only uh, action that you take is acceptance you know you're accepting gifts from this creative beyond that isn't even you it's just happening you know and you're just like playing but Jesus, like whatever but no you're accepting these gifts that are being given you moment by moment express expression by expression and they're just flowing through you and all you do is accept 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 and that's how you achieve the height of any mindful practice really but music is a particularly powerful one because what's created is mind-blowing um I uh, know there's a quote in a book called Effortless Mastery, which if you're a musician, you should totally check this book out. Effortless Mastery is uh, actually a book that my friend Matt DeAngelis recommended to me. He was on this um, little series a couple weeks ago, and he's one of the best musicians I know. And um, I haven't actually read the book yet. I, I just picked it up, but I know there's a quote in it that's like, when you reach this selfless state and when you reach this height of expression. Um, just listening to someone do that can just change your life. And and I know from experience that it has changed my life. You know, um, there was a, there's this one particular fish jam. Um, it's Harry Hood from New Year's Eve, 1993. And you can, you can go listen to this on YouTube. I'm sure you can find it. But just the the peak of Trey's solo in that jam literally changed my life. It made me like realize, wait, this whole music thing is like powerful. You know, it's not just, it's not just blah, blah, blah. You know, it's literally just power. Um, and it can lift anything, um, which is kind of what that did for me. And there's a couple other jams that I 
relate to in that same way. But that's the, the jam that really, really did it for me. Um, speaking of it, that's kind of what that feeling is. It's that everything has been, uh, you know, I'm, I, there's this thing called it that we talk with in the fish world. <laughs> and what it is, is kind of when everyone's just locked in together in that state of complete acceptance of whatever notes are going to happen, whatever emotions are going to happen, whatever ideas are going to happen, and it just flows, and just flows and flows and flows. And when that happens, everything is just, I don't know, like, everything is just incredible. Everything is beautiful. Everything is um, just transcendent, practically, you know? And this is what separates, to me, Fish from other bands. And maybe not from all other bands. Some other bands do this pretty well, but no one does it quite like Fish, I think. And that's why they're my favorite band, you know. Um, <laughs> go figure, I've seen them like 20 something times. So, um, so yeah, that's the goal of any mindful practice. It's not just to go blah, 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 blah. It's to kind of be focused and through the blah, 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 blah that wants to come out, you kind of channel it into something more meaningful and it wants to be meaningful that's the thing when you take yourself out of it the meaning is innate practically which is kind of an incredible thing um it says a lot about psychology <laughs> uh and society and stuff but but yeah so um yeah so that's kind of the goal of any mindful practice though music obviously it's kind of channeling to whatever wants to be played and not playing just what you, you know, think you should play. Um, something like meditation is a little different because it's just feeling whatever wants to be felt, basically. It's not, it's, it, you know, you feel pain sometimes, but you don't say, oh, pain, that's bad, I don't want that. No, you just sit with the pain and then it goes away, you know? Same with happiness and, and you know, good pleasurable sensations. You sit with the pleasurable sensation but you don't say, oh, that's good. You just sit with it and you feel it. Because in the end, all of these things are impermanent. This kind of goes to all the other lecture thingies we've had. But, um, so, that sort of thing. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say on that. But, you know, one interesting thing is, as a musician, I've kind of developed this philosophy and stuff that I've experienced degrees of it and um, I don't know pretty recently I've been playing uh, just really well and I've been really trying to take myself out of it and just play whatever my hands want to do I'm letting my hands teach me how to play the guitar basically and you know I can play pretty quick and like do this and that but it's always new that way you know my hands always have something new to teach me and I'm so grateful for that you know so it's just about freeing the energy that's already there it's not about trying to channel it even, it's just about not channeling it, it's about, it's about letting it be whatever it is. Um, you know, there's points in my life when I've thought, dang, music is like, can be chaotic, it can be good, it can be bad, it can produce these such strong feelings, but whatever happens, you just have to let go and let it do whatever it's gonna do because it almost self-regulates you know it wants to be beautiful and no matter what it does you know it could be terrifying but it could be terrifyingly beautiful you know the good parts parts aren't as good unless there's some of these other weird parts you know it's whatever it wants to be and you just have to let go and fall into this this chaotic you know storm of self-regulating thing that's beyond life that's beyond humanity you know, that's kind of how I see music. It's this thing that's just, it's lit I, I think I see it as a storm, but that it's not a dangerous storm, it's just a, it's just a storm, <laughs> you know? It's like, it's good actually, you know, water's good. The hose, water, <laughs> water flows through. Um, I see it as very chaotic though, uh, because it always is in motion. That's the other thing, music is always in motion. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's about finding 
giving yourself to the motion and just going with it around and around in this sort of hurricane. And if you just go with the wind, it, you, you never really get swept away because you're always in the act of being swept away. So, and that's, that's a great thing. Honestly, I'm, I'm super grateful to, to be able to experience that um, and to be able to play it. Oh my God, what a joy it is to play. But, um, okay, cheers. I'm going to uh, get back to playing. I think that's a good, good place to end the rant. We're going to go with the wind, play some more music, and uh, yeah. So move this little guy. Oh, so the other thing that I wanted to mention, and this is just kind of a side note. Um, so yesterday I had a really, really intense um, kind of creative breakthrough, I guess you could call it. And I'll probably be releasing a lot of the music that I recorded um, somewhere later today or tomorrow or something. A lot of really cool stuff came out though yesterday that I'm really happy to, to share. Um, but until then, <laughs> it's no time like <laughs>
See, that's kind of what I mean. You just, <laughs> just go, music, go. And then it goes, and it's like, cool. I also have pretty much never played anything this low register. But I kind of like that. That sounds so nice. It, honestly, though, this string on this guitar never sounds good to me. I, I don't know. Sometimes it is. But like up here.
See, music is just so fun to play. I could just sit here all day, <laughs> put in my 10,000 hours a little bit at a time. <laughs> Honestly, I used to play for like about eight to 10 hours a day. There was a, there was a good six-ish month chunk of time when I would play that much almost every single day. And that's, that's when I started getting pretty good, too. Like, I, you know. It's kind of interesting to think about because I went through that period of my life when I got kind of good at music. If you keep up with me and this and stuff, you know that I recently went, went on a meditation retreat when I was meditating for like 10 to 12 hours a day for 10 days straight. And that really deepened my meditation practice, that's for sure. It's kind of interesting how if you really commit yourself to something, you just really get really good pretty fast, I guess. Uh, guitar, guitar was really just determination for me, though. Most of, most of my life I've been awful at guitar. I've played pretty much my whole life, but I've, I've pretty much always been awful. It's only like within the past two years that I've gotten any resemblance of, of good at guitar. And even then, I don't like calling myself good at guitar because I know I can always, you know, be better. And I don't want to think of myself as being good at guitar. I just want to play guitar. And, I, and it's great because I'm good enough that guitar is really fun. So it's become a, a much less effort to play and more just like, I want to play guitar. And so I do, and it's great. So anyway, <laughs> rant concludes. <laughs> Thank you.
You guys like the vibes if you don't I'm gonna keep playing whatever I want to play but <laughs>
these texts I keep getting? I try not to like read and get distracted, but I've been getting a million freaking texts. Oh boy. <laughs> Sweaty man.
tuning in. See you next time. Be well and enjoy the beginning of the summer. Peace.